You guys know I love my Tesla, but let's be real, they are not cheap, and thus they are not an accessible electric vehicle to everyone out there. Even the cheapest one after taxes is about $50,000. So it got me thinking about what the cheapest electric vehicle out there is like. And here it is. So this here is a 2022 Nissan Leaf. It starts at $27,500, but that's only gonna get you about 150 miles of range. To get more range, you're gonna be paying more 30 to 40,000. And also if you want some more of the driver assist features, you have to pay more for that too. So it's quite a bit cheaper than a Tesla, but is it really worth buying? When you look online, the specs of this car look almost like a Tesla, like 226 miles of range. That's almost what a Model 3 has. They've got an app to start it, and they also have driver assist features that look pretty much like autopilot. But is it really as good? Let's find out. But before we get into the video, I wanted to thank Omaze for sponsoring this video. I'm so excited to be working with Omaze again to offer you the chance to potentially win a Tesla Model X. That's right, they're giving away another Tesla Model X. And in fact, Omaze has given away over 6,000 different things now. Isn't that crazy? I saw that stat and was like, whoa. So they are giving away a Tesla Model X plaid in the midnight silver metallic color. It's tricked out with everything. You've got full self-driving, you have the 22 inch wheels, full panoramic roof. It's a lot cooler than the car that I'm making this video about. This Tesla is worth $148,000. And if you win, you can actually take a cash alternative of $111,000 if you'd like. And if you guys aren't familiar with Omaze, they hold giveaways and partner with different charities to raise money for all these different charities. So this one in particular is to raise money for Give Power and 501c3. So Give Power, if you guys haven't heard of it, is really cool. They're building solar farms all over the world to help bring clean clean water and energy to the roughly 2.2 billion people around the world who don't have access to it. And 501c3 is at the intersection of innovation and storytelling. 501c3 brings attention to solutions to help us build a cleaner, more sustainable and hopeful future. So for a chance to win a Tesla Model X Plaid and support Give Power and 501c3, you can go to the link below. I'll also have it on the screen here. Go on and enter. I hope that one of you guys win. And now let's get into the video. So this car really does look just like a normal old car. A lot of EVs try and look futuristic, sort of modern and really sporty. And this one, they did not do that at all. So it's just a basic normal looking car, which I think honestly appeals to a lot of people. When I'm doing this review, we really have to remember that it's not priced the same as a Tesla. It's really not priced as a luxury car. So we can be a bit more forgiving when comparing it to a Tesla or a Mach-E. It's not trying to be a luxury car. It's really very practical. It actually kind of reminds me of a Prius. You respect it, it's practical. It's not trying to be super cool. It just, it is what it is. So this car obviously is a hatchback, but unlike the Mach-E and the Tesla Model Y, it doesn't really look very sporty at all. So something different about this car is the charging ports are actually in the front and there's not one, there's two of them. This one is kind of outdated, um, but this one is similar to the Tesla's. Also something different, there's actually no front trunk in this car. Not a huge deal breaker, because I honestly never really use my frunk, but a little less storage space for you there. The interior of this car feels a lot like just your typical gas car. There's tons of buttons, but there is a more modern touchscreen interface. And there's also another screen above the steering wheel. However, I will say the main screen that you get is a lot smaller than the screen in either a Tesla or the Ford Mach-E. And more importantly than the size of it, I just found the software to be really clunky and outdated. It kind of reminds me of the interface you would find on an Android phone. I would say it's not as good as Apple CarPlay or the Tesla interface. Not a fan of the interface on here. It just, I don't like it. The interior has a lot of buttons. So it's similar to a normal car. It feels just like a normal gas car. A lot of EVs do the touchscreen with just a few buttons. So it's gonna feel familiar to most people. I prefer now the clean and more minimal look. 
but I know that's subjective and a lot of people probably like this kind so it's really just up to your personal preference and this car has cloth seats but you can upgrade it I'm not really a fan of these seats to be honest because the price point is lower on this car I think it's fair that you know you're not getting as good of a screen interface whatever it's still good enough some of those things might not be important to you I would say overall it's a pretty basic interior nothing fancy it's got some technology but it doesn't feel state of the art if the technology and all of that isn't that important to you anyway then I think you're gonna like this just fine in my opinion, Tesla's and the Ford Mach-E are both really fast, really fun cars to drive. So I was interested to see how this drives. All right, let's take the car for a drive. It's being so quiet right now. It's actually really loud though. Listen to this. All right, so you can't really hear it in this clip, but I got a clip of Sam driving and you can hear it a lot better. The noise is so loud. It's like a backup truck. <laughs> Everyone has to know I'm backing up. So they add an artificial noise so that people know that the car is there, basically. And all of the newer EVs have this. So people that have difficulty seeing can hear the car. It's a safety thing and my car doesn't have it. So I was like, whoa, this is so weird. A lot of people don't like it, but unfortunately the car companies don't even have a choice. This car goes zero to 60 in eight seconds. For context, that's almost three seconds slower than the Tesla Model 3 and the Ford Mach-E. And that three second difference might not sound like a lot, but honestly, I'm noticing it's a huge difference. This car, I feel like it's just not as fun to drive. It definitely doesn't drive as fast. So if you're someone who likes when your car can accelerate really fast, which like who doesn't like that, honestly, then this car isn't really the best for that. It still reacts quickly, but something about the Tesla and Mach-E, I felt you don't have to try as hard. You don't have to step on the gas as hard. This one, you have to step on it a little more, which is fine. I don't know. I don't love the way it drives compared to a Tesla. So remember how it had a system that seems similar to autopilot? It's called Nissan's Pro Pilot. Unfortunately, I realized this Turo rental didn't have that program, but I did some digging on YouTube and found it isn't quite as good as autopilot, sadly. So it does have steering assist, meaning it will stay within a lane. It can kind of stop and slow down for cars. If it notices a car is slowing down, you have to step on the brake and then it will finish slowing down for you. It's really not the same as autopilot, it sounds like. And then there's a whole list of times where it's not gonna work. So it might not work when it's raining. It doesn't really work at the end of a traffic jam. It definitely can't change lanes it probably would be helpful for freeway driving but it's definitely not as good as autopilot now something really important how quickly can it charge in the car you're able to use the map to search for chargers and you can filter level one two fast chargers all of that so that's pretty nice i filtered it for a quick charging station and it seemed like there actually was a good amount of them in seattle okay here we are at the charging station it's an Electrify America charger. Nissan doesn't have like a supercharger network, so I took it to an Electrify America station. And these are actually really convenient to use. You can just tap your phone, very easy to get going. Good news is this car can do fast charging, but I wanted to see how fast. I just realized I backed in out of habit, but the, the charging port is in the front. Yeah, let's fix that. Car is plugged in. I did not expect that type of charger the chadmo it's super heavy i tried to get a shot of me putting it in but i needed to use both hands this thing was freaking heavy so the car is plugged in one thing i think is kind of strange is that there's no indication inside the car of how much time you have left to charge and how much battery it just says that it's plugged in but i'm not really seeing anything on that so when you're in a tesla it will tell you down to the minute how much time you have left this is a little bit like okay i see i have three bars how long will it take to get two more bars i have no idea another thing i think is important to know is that while there were three different parking stations only one of them had the dc kind that works with this car 
there's not that many charging stations here, but on the little map, it did show there are a number of fast charging stations nearby. So if you're in a bigger city, there probably are a good amount of charging stations nearby. So I charged it up to 96%. And on the Electrify America thing, it said this took 53 minutes, which is kind of a long time. And $6.45. When I got here, we were starting at 50-ish percent battery, and now I'm at 94%. It was a little bit slow just because we're not at a dead battery. It always charges faster when your battery is more drained. But it, yeah, it still charged decently fast. I'm sure that if I had come here with 10% battery, it would have charged probably like 80%. So it did okay. I was charged $6 from Electrify America. <laughs> a little more expensive than a supercharger, but still cheaper than gas. Overall, I would say this is a successful charging session. It's kind of on par with how long it would take to supercharge it Tesla, it's just a bit more expensive because you're using Electrify America. It's good to know that it is possible to fast charge with this car, but I still think because the range is only 150 miles for the cheapest version of it, you wouldn't really want to take this on a road trip. It's really more of like a city car, but you could potentially take it on a road trip. Like you, you could do it. But even the Turo listing that I rent this from said they don't recommend it for road trips and to just rent a Tesla. Overall, the charging, I think not as good as the charging network that Tesla has, but about the same as the Ford Mach-E. You know, if you have a place to charge at home, then it's totally fine. Overall, I would say it's a pretty good car. However, definitely not as good as a Tesla like the website had me expecting. But it's quite a bit cheaper, so I think that's totally fair. I think this is a good option for someone who wants an electric vehicle, but they don't want to spend as much and don't need features like autopilot. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.